I'm going to restart this video here. I tried to film it before, made a couple mistakes. But as you can see, I am printing right now with the volcano nozzle, dual fans running at 100%. There is a lot of airflow coming out of here. Um, but I'm not sure if it's due to the actual filament I'm using or what, but I'm still having some issues. Um, I'm having some first layer adhesion issues, as you can see with the first perimeter here. It did peel up and I had to pull it. Um, the other thing I'm running into is, honestly, I really feel like it's slicer settings. You can kind of see here, there it is right in here. It is starting and stopping in the same place and it is skipping, extruding on some spots. But I believe that is partially due to the fact that we're running a 0 0.6 millimeter nozzle instead of 0.4. Um, so I am going to get in a 0.4 millimeter volcano nozzle and see if that changes things. But on to what you guys are here for. Modifying your Ender 5 S1 to run the volcano nozzles. So as some of you guys may know, this is the stock, I guess, part of the stock hot end. This is the heat sink with the heat brake in it. Um, first things first, you have two choices with your heat brake. You are either able to run the stock one, which I personally recommend doing. I did upgrade to the Red Lizard one. I don't know if it's going to do much else. It is a longer uh, chunk of copper in there, so I feel like it might dissipate a little more heat and possibly run into a little less issues in the long run with clogging. But it does mean you are stuck using that one and you can't go back to running stock um, unless you mill this absolutely perfect, which, let's be honest, it's not going to happen. Um, unless some of you have a CNC or a like insanely nice drill press setup. Um, I just did this with a drill. I, I have shop tools, but I just prefer not to have to run down to my garage and do it every time. Um, back to this though, if you do decide to run the Red Lizard one like I did, you are going to have to take a six millimeter drill bit. And it's about a millimeter to two millimeters that you're going to have to drill out. Inside here, um, there is a piece of Bowden tubing. I believe I took it out of this one, but you can see in here. Um, it just runs down and to meet the actual heat break. Um, you're going to have to trim a little bit off that as well. Um, you are going to need, I believe these are M2 screws. Don't quote me on that. You're going to need a bunch of screws anyway, so I highly recommend just picking up a pack like I did. I got just some on Amazon. Has everything I've needed so far. Would like a little bit longer set, but these do the trick. Um, that way you're able to mount on the next piece. The next piece, I don't have an extra one, so I can't really show you, but I'll just use a stock heat break, heat block to show you. So the stock heat block, sorry, this is not focusing very well. My phone is not being very good about this. Um, stock heat block, your thermistor and heater are on the sides. On the Red Lizard, it is actually flipped. So I guess it kind of sits like this. Um, you have a thermistor that is gonna be in the front and your heater in the back. Make sure when you are mounting it, the grub screw and the thermistor line up. You cannot have the thermistor in the back because the wires for the heater are too thick and will not wrap around. They will break off before you're able to wrap them around and actually fit them into the plug on the back PCB. So remember, thermistor in the front. The other thing you're gonna need is some shorter screws. The M2 screws are not, um, the M2 screws that use on the stock, whoops, excuse me, on the stock heater block here are too long. Um, they, they will not work. So pick up a smaller set, it will mount. That's it as far as the hot end is concerned. Everything else plugs in, it all works. You can use your stock uh, thermistor and heater, everything works. On to the other parts. So I printed an extra one just so you can see. This is the dual 5015 fan uh, mount. I can't really show you very well. It is back there, you can kind of see right here. Let's move around. But you will need dual 5015 fans. Um, I don't know why, but I was having severe cooling issues. I could not print bridges, anything. And again, I do feel like that is partially due to the 0.6 millimeter nozzle and some software issues as far as the Creality Slicer is concerned. Um, probably need to switch back over to using Cura or even switch to a Prusa Slicer. But the 5015 fans are almost completely necessary just for cooling. Um, I wasn't able to print at speeds, as you can see now. I'm printing close to 200 millimeters a second, I believe right now, 180, something like that. No real issues. I got minor, minor stringing here, a little bit of blobbing, but the layer lines, everything looks pretty good. Um, 
I am also getting some software bugs still. I know a lot of people are. Um, first layer issues, I'm having to delete the printer completely off of the Sonic Pad and completely reattach or reconfigure it and go through the bed leveling setups to get everything to work. Um, the other thing you're gonna need, I almost forgot about this, for your CR Touch. Coming in here, you can see I have the offset one, mine is not in line, it does not mount to the same place as the fans mount. And that's the other thing you're gonna need is a bunch of spacers. I highly recommend, um, i see if I can link it, but I highly, highly recommend printing out just a bunch of the um, BL Touch or the CR Touch, whichever one you find, whichever one you like best. Spacers, I actually clipped mine up just to make them little round spacers to put over the screws. Um, I believe the, there's four millimeters on each, both the fan and the BL Touch, CR Touch, whatever it is, they're the same thing, crying about it. Um, about four, two to four millimeters, it, it's gonna be, I thought it would be six because that is the difference in this and the Red Lizard hot end, but it is four millimeters is what I had to do. And that got my fans sitting, excuse me, sitting just about perfect here. So, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to shoot me a message, comment on here. Whatever you gotta do, I'd be glad to help. But again, do this at your own risk. I'm still running into issues. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good day.